What does crypto being classified as a security mean for you? Again, this never-ending legal battle between the SEC and Coinbase is about to begin, and it will have a significant impact on the whole cryptocurrency market. After the markets absorbed the Fed's rate hike in March, the SEC added by sending Coinbase a Wells notice, indicating its intention to file charges against the largest and most well-known US exchange. Then, in typical SEC fashion, the organization didn't exactly say what those sanctions are. However, Coinbase's chief legal officer, Paul Growell, provided some specifics in a later blog post, saying that the Wells Notice doesn't provide a lot of information to work with. The SEC personnel informed Coinbase that they had only found a few probable security law violations. The SEC refused Coinbase's request to identify the precise assets on our platforms that they think might constitute securities. On a related issue, do you think it's a surprise to find that the SEC launched this initial attack against Coinbase at the same time as it is aggressively attempting to debank the US cryptocurrency business in collaboration with the Fed and other regulatory bodies? Coinbase may be well equipped and appear to be ready to take on the challenge, but without a connection to a banking system, it may find it far more difficult to pursue a lengthy case in a US court. Welcome to Altcoin Heroes, your most reliable source of cryptocurrency news and predictions. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. We'll upload videos about the latest news, trends, and predictions in crypto. Don't forget to click the notification bell so you won't be missing out or left behind and be updated. So Paul used the phrase potential violations of security laws, which is very open-ended but may imply that the SEC may be targeting Coinbase as a part of its broader campaign against proof-of-stake cryptocurrencies. You may recall that on the day of Ethereum's merger last September, SEC Chairman Gary Gensler said that proof-of-stake cryptocurrencies might be considered securities. Gary has intensified his efforts in this area recently, but in February, the SEC won a big success when Kraken agreed to stop providing its staking services and pay a $30 million punishment. As a result, Gary has increased his efforts. Remember, when the accusations start coming, the ones who win always turn out to be the attorneys. So I suppose the SEC's legal staff has already set aside that money for the impending legal battle with Coinbase. Coinbase indicated via its support page that it would be switching to on-chain staking for a number of assets shortly after the Wells Notice news came. In other words, users receive incentives from the protocol instead of Coinbase. To connect you, the validators, and the protocol, Coinbase only serves as a service provider. Coinbase is therefore definitely beginning to put its operations in order, despite crypto sales speculation that it's been in the process for a while. It's not apparent if the measures are connected to the Wells warning that Coinbase received from securities regulators. According to statements made by Coinbase, the adjustments were planned even before the company received the notice on March 10. The US SEC's announcement that it will be initiating legal action against retail staking products in February may have had an impact on the adjustments. Both the press release announcing Logan Paul's upcoming NFT project and the announcement of the SEC's action against Coinbase have now been released. More and more organizations are being drawn into the US government's fight against cryptocurrency. There is no doubt that the SEC will pursue the major participants. Who will therefore be next? When staking is enabled in Shanghai and goes live in April, will Ethereum come into the spotlight? So, what if the SEC is successful in convicting the court that most cryptocurrencies other than Bitcoin are securities? What if it succeeds in its case versus Ripple and finds momentum to pursue other altcoins? Keep in mind, XRP isn't a proof-of-stake cryptocurrency. Now, suppose the SEC is able to persuade that the actions of recognizable third parties are what led to investors' expectations of profit from buying altcoins. What follows? Could this mark the end of cryptocurrency in the US? So, let's say the worst has occurred. Gary won, and an altcoin is now regarded as a security in the official documents. What comes after that? 
the issuer of the altcoin, US-based exchanges selling the altcoin, and those who purchase the altcoin are the three groups of stakeholders who are primarily affected. You might now assume that the altcoin would be removed from all US exchanges as the initial action, since, as we observed when the SEC sued Ripple in 2020, XRP was immediately delisted. We can infer that a cryptocurrency classified as a security is now taken off the market and is no longer accessible. It goes without saying that its pricing has already been awful and will certainly have decreased further as a result of the SEC's success. As you might expect, the altcoin's first item of action is to pay the SEC an extremely large amount fine for marketing the altcoin as an unregistered currency. Even so, the suffering continues. The altcoin's issuer will now have to decide whether to sell it with the exception of US investors to keep selling it as an unregistered security or go through the required steps to sell it as a registered security. It's a difficult decision. Option 1 is undoubtedly not the best decision because the US is the largest cryptocurrency market in the world and to be blocked from this market will shut a huge money-generating opportunity. The stringent restrictions on who can purchase unregistered securities make option 2 less desirable than option 1. Rich persons and institutions are typically the only accredited investors who can purchase unregistered securities. That excludes typical retail investors. But, if the issuer believes it can sustain itself by selling the cryptocurrency to a limited group of wealthy people, then that might not be a problem. But would those wealthy people be so eager to purchase a stock that was tarnished by the media attention involving the court case and likely wouldn't have a very liquid market? If accredited investors are unable to sell their coins to consumers just before the price falls, the experience is less rewarding. The amount of money that can be raised through the sale of unregistered securities may also be subject to restrictions. So once more, not a great decision. Now, I know this is an exciting update, but before that, I just wanted to let you know that I would greatly appreciate it if you guys clicked on the like button and pressed the bell over there to turn on your notifications. Done? Alright then, let's continue. Hence, the ideal situation is to be a registered security, but this requires more paperwork than necessary to elevate Wernham Hog to the FTSE 100, or if you're an American, the S&P 500 and Dunder Mifflin. There aren't nearly as many restrictions on selling registered securities as there are on unregistered ones, but that privilege must be earned. Large amounts of documentation will be required by the SEC, including token subscription agreements, disclosures, evidence of compliance with KYC and AML procedures, company information, details regarding the asset in question, copies of investor-facing publicity, contracts, articles of incorporation, underwriting information, and many more. The SEC will soon receive further checks from the altcoin issuer if the costly, labor-intensive, and time-consuming paperwork is not in place. There will be even more additional paperwork for those exchanges. As it's to be expected, both issuing and selling securities are difficult tasks. The burden of paperwork will then be shifted to any exchange looking to sell the altcoin, presuming the issuer registers it as a security. So, supposing Coinbase makes the decision to move forward, it must submit an application for a broker-deal license or a comparable capital markets license in the jurisdiction it chooses to conduct business in order to sell securities. The SEC, the Financial Industry Regulator Authority or FINRA, and each state's regulator are among the regulatory authorities in the US. This explains why US exchanges like Coinbase, Kraken, and Gemini go to great lengths to emphasize how many licenses they have just to conduct business as usual in the US. And the significant reason why their trading fees are typically greater compared to non-US exchanges is because of this. For no other reason than to ensure they have all the necessary paperwork, they must jointly spend millions of dollars annually. The question that remains for the exchange is whether the altcoin, which is now categorized as a security, will draw sufficient interest and consequently trading fees to justify the trouble and expense of obtaining and keeping all those additional licenses. 
the old coin is most likely not the solution all by itself. But if other cryptocurrencies are likely to be classified as securities as a result of one altcoin, the case for filing the papers becomes more compelling. Naturally, if one exchange chooses to proceed, its competitors will have to think about following suit out of concern that they will fall behind and give their rivals an edge. How does this affect hodlers? Those who delist from the US exchanges will already be experiencing a decrease in the value of their holdings. Everyone who purchased before the SEC arrived will therefore have already endured considerable hardship. But that doesn't mean it's the final chapter. Particularly if a growing number of cryptocurrencies fall into the securities category as a side effect of the president that has already been formed. And when issuers and exchanges make their way through the paperwork, maybe we'll be able to live in a world where cryptocurrency can exist under the SEC strict supervision. And the absurd enforcement-based regulatory framework that we currently observe might disappear. It's not hard to picture a future in which crypto is permitted to exist and develop in a way that's acceptable to most parties, provided that investor security isn't taken too far and some reasonable crypto-friendly rules do finally get implemented in the US. There are some dark sides to life, when it becomes necessary for them to dedicate large portions of their workforces to simply complying, smaller crypto projects and exchanges may have an even tougher time surviving and prospering. Decentralization is also difficult to envision in such a setting. There is a genuine risk that cryptocurrency might become just another branch of the current financial system if Gary Gensler is successful in his efforts to regulate it in his favor. Maybe Coinbase will prove to be too much for the SEC to handle. Or maybe the organization is just starting. Decentralization is the greatest tool you can have for the larger crypto business. Especially for those projects that are now in development. Bitcoin and Ethereum will endure as decentralization efforts have been made over time even if the SEC pursues them. But no cryptocurrency will be secure until it has become decentralized enough to make it difficult to establish the source of any expectation of profit. Hopefully, the cryptocurrency market will eventually become one in which only the greatest and most decentralized projects thrive. Although we are still far from that goal, we must work to make it there as soon as possible because the other option is not where we would like it to be. Now, let us know what you think. Leave your comments below. We appreciate you for staying till the end. Kindly click the like, subscribe, and notification bell icons if you enjoy this video. Visit our channel for more coin predictions, Bitcoin, altcoins, and cryptocurrency videos. Have a great day and see you in our next video.